Welcome to the No BS Short-Term Rental Podcast, an unfiltered look into the global vacation and short-term rental industry. I'm Mateo Bradford. And I'm John Stokinger. And this is our podcast. We bring the right people to the table at the right time, giving you an inside view and take on the short-term rental industry like no other podcast can. Thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah. This is like a super impromptu, uh, yeah. and we're really glad that, that you joined us. Absolutely. It's uh, No BS, Short Term Rental Podcast, episode, total episode 49, but it's it's uh, season two, episode 19. Okay. Uh, appreciate you coming and doing this thing with us. Normally, we start these off with like, good morning, and uh, like, how's it going? Anyway, how's it going, Mateo? Yeah. Fantastic, John. <laughs> but, I mean, con- but it's conference day, too. So, <laughs> yeah, it is conference day, too. Um, so, yeah, tear up. We'll be our man in it. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Here in, uh, where the hell are we? We're in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's been a long Shout out, you know, Chicago Hilton. <laughs> setting us up this, building. Yes. Yeah, can we talk about that for a second? So Every time I get in the elevator, I learn something new about this building. Is it haunted? I did not know, did yeah. not know that, but like <laughs> this building was like designed and built by like the Supreme Court Justice Stephen uh, Stevens like father, and then like every president like his state, the Queen stayed here. Yeah, because there's a helicopter pad, I think somewhere. There's a five thousand square foot suite at the top of this building that's probably and gay, great get, Gatsby. We like, didn't I, get I'm, there. I'm trying I'm to get a tour, but I'm trying to get a tour before we go. But like all kind of movies were filmed here, The Fugitive, like Road to Perdition, Tom Hanks, like all these old school movies. I have no idea. I also give them, you're not in. Oh, you're not. Well, yeah. I give the hotel staff a lot of credit. <laughs> They're like, "Have you signed up for Hilton Honors?" I'm like, "You realize this is like the vacation rental that's conference." Right. And he, I was like, "It's gonna be a tough audience." And he's like, "We're tougher." And I was like, "Okay, and, sir." And, and real you talk, I, he was, I was like, like "He's like, I'll give you fifty thousand points right now." I was like, "You know what, man? I'll help you out." Because clearly, I'm staying in a Hilton. Yeah, exactly. I haven't right. stayed in a Hilton in a long time. Yeah. No, I. Uh, yeah, we're staying next door. <laughs> yeah, I'm also staying next door. <laughs> but shout out to Hilton and <laughs> next doors. <laughs> so, uh, how's how's the show been? For, well, first of all, why don't you go ahead and give a good introduction? You I, I can introduce myself. So, uh, <laughs> I'm we Brand- do this. Though. We do, we do this forever. Right. It's fine. I'm I'm easy going. Um, so, I'm Brandy Canali. I'm the CEO of Sex and Stays. Uh, we are headquartered in Miami, but we have uh, properties all throughout South Florida and New Orleans. Um, and I'm enjoying the show so far. I'm here solo, um, so unsupervised. Uh, which we, we know this. <laughs> we know. Excuse me. <laughs> I have been on my best behavior. Yes, so. you have. Yes, she has. Yes, she yes. has. Andreas, I have been on her best behavior. So, 100% <laughs> behavior. Um, yeah, so it's been fun so far. I, it's great to see people in person. I've met a lot of people in the last couple of days that I have met repeatedly on Zoom. Yeah, and it's right. really great to make you're a physical person. It's yeah, great. You're real. Like, yeah. You're real. Yeah. And that's what's super nice about these conferences, you know, and the COVID just closed it down forever. And I know we, you know, whenever we talk about it and it's, I'm, I'm sick of talking about COVID, mm-hmm. but at the same time, to be able to get out of, and, and to meet people and, and, and feel normal again and knock on wood that it, it stays that way. I know there's some spikes coming up here and there in different areas, but hopefully yeah. we're good <laughs> and we yeah. can just like you know, ride this out and not have to go back into that bullshit. I mean, truly it was, yeah. It's, it was I'm ready. And you know, I, yeah, it I was, mean, we're so over it. Like, absolutely. It's also, I mean, in the beginning, I think everyone in this industry was like, are we going to have an industry at the end yeah, of this? Right. Um, and I think we've just been incredibly resilient as an industry. And now okay. it's all, it's all coming back. So yes, positive thoughts. <laughs> let's, let's talk about, uh, talk about you. Like we want to know your story. We want to, sure. you know, let's hear, you know, how did you get into this? You know, like we, <laughs> everyone knows our story. We, we <laughs> met in Germany. Gatlinburg. Yeah. Like Gatlinburg. Uh, yeah. A place. Shout out to Shout Gatlinburg. Out to Gatlinburg. Uh, <laughs> it's an often conversation on like how we, I feel like about. I have to go. I, I just, I've never. I, I do. Yeah. Amy, I think you need to take VRHV back to Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg. When you're listening. <laughs> yeah. but are they close? Are those places there. close to each other? Yeah, they're right. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's, it's a as far as vacation destinations go and, and bang for your buck in, in like in beds yeah and I've heard it's a drivable destination yeah. to yeah. like the greatest population like it's people drive from like the midwest yeah i was surprised when i looked at the data and the demographics that they yeah. do out there like the people that go to gatlinburg you think because it's in this little enclave in the smoky mountains that like oh it's only like Carolina, Georgia. Yeah. 
you know, you got people that are coming from Indiana and well, that's I had my aunt and uncle mm -hmm. said they were going there, and I was like, I just heard that just a couple of years ago at mm -hmm. one of my first like industry conferences, and I was like, why am I hearing about this place yeah. so much? And it is wild, like no, it is. It's like Myrtle Beach in the middle <laughs> of the mountains. Uh, been to Myrtle Beach my entire. <laughs> I grew up in uh, Rochester, New York, mm -hmm. and basically our entire like Western New York like migrates to either the Outer Banks or yeah. oh, Myrtle yeah. Beach for spring break. Yeah. What an interesting place. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, imagine it being in the mountains. Yeah. Same stores, like you know, the same chasky shops, like the same. It's, A whole bunch of Margaritavilles. Um, uh, yeah, but, but <laughs> more, more moonshine. More moonshine. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, honestly, more fun. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is. It, it's it's interesting. If you're not from there and you haven't been, I, I highly encourage at least yeah. once. Yeah. Um, it's, it does uh, have an outlying village with a yeah. nice yeah. It does. Interesting. It's, it's, they yeah, well, I, ski slope. Yeah. I was just in uh, Nashville. We did a company offsite there, and that was the first time I've been to Nashville. Um, Love that Nashville. is a riot. We were there. It's low season, middle of the week, packed. It was crazy. Yeah. My, um, my favorite place in Nashville to go listen to music is, uh, I think it's Robert's Boot Shop um, or Robertson's Boot Shop. It's right, like, right at the beginning of Honky Tonk Row. Mm. And they sell boots during the day. And, and then it night, turns, it's I love them. that. We yeah. have our whole team, there was like 10 or 11 of us, and we just walked into like one of those incredibly tacky tourist shops, and we all bought hats oh, yeah. and walked out with them. I have some great, great pictures from that evening. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Gotti told me Nashville is the bachelorette like, mm. party capital of the world. And Absolutely. Uh, and followed, know, followed closely idea. by Miami and New Orleans. My bad. That's like, are mm -hmm. you know i i call it like the woo markets like whenever you hear the woo girls like, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> and like that they're everywhere um but yeah i mean they come to spend some serious money so i'm so, about it tell us. I, yeah so, like, so yeah my, my journey i feel like everybody has kind of this like similar story where they're like i had no like i this wasn't planned and then i just ended up here forever yeah, yeah. exactly so yeah. um Andreas is married to my cousin and so at the time they were dating and I was graduating from grad school and grad school just kind of ended very quickly and I hadn't lined up job mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and oops. I whoops. <laughs> um, but um, I had studied international management I really wanted to work for Airbnb I did my thesis on Airbnb and that was my goal so when Andreas um, needed you know he was starting the company it was just him at the time so i thought perfect i'll go like live in miami for a year that doesn't sound terrible and <laughs> there's worse things you there's could do, worse right? things i could be doing right. um and like help andreas like you know get this started and then i would have my real job and then i never left and so for the first you know couple years it was really hustling it was like a couple of us we grew from like three to five to like just around ten but like really you know working out of his dining room table um all of that kind of stuff working out of storage units and originally we started with uh single family homes in miami and uh you know over time that just becomes it's not a sustainable right. and especially in miami just like not it's a totally different yeah. market yeah. yeah and also you have if you have let's say 30 homes like that's basically the 100 room hotel that's spread out over miami you have traffic you have people getting you know right. trying to get people around it's just logistically kind of yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely that's, that's so um we started off um with these smaller like boutique uh buildings 10 15 units and realize that that's really that's the goal right to have right. these kind of the full building residences that we've pivoted to now. So we still have some legacy property that we have in mm -hmm. Miami, um, but we're definitely, you know, that's kind of a thing of the past. Um, so yeah, it's been a really incredible journey. Like before COVID, we had 60 units and now we have 500. So it's, <laughs> it's a little bit of growth. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it was a real, it's like, I, it was a real baptism by fire, yeah, you know, right. and, but I think that's like the best, there was just no choice, but to do like to figure it out as you go along. Uh, when you all started, were you, were you working on a, a lease model similar to those that went under? Yeah. Um, and so how did you go ahead and then navigate that where, where others failed miserably and, and no, like who yeah. would have known, right? Sure. Like it was, you know, but, but you obviously came out on, on top yeah. and in, and on top of that, like, like you're scaling it like this yeah. amazingly. Thank you. Yeah. So really some of it comes down to timing. Uh, we got um, one of our rounds of our seed funding, what came in in January of 2020. So like, that was a coincidence that that right. happened. Um, but also I think 
what our model has been to grow responsibly and actually make sure that we have a profitable business. Like we we're profitable now, which I don't think many other people in our space can say. So like if we don't have funding, if all of that was cut off, like our business could sustain itself. Right. And so I think that is key. So when, I mean, you never want to see businesses fail, especially like it was just a domino yeah. effect. Uh, but I felt, I felt so bad, really. Like, yeah. these, are, these are friends of ours. These are like people Absolutely. like, and I know you, you know, we're all connected. And I was like, yeah. oh and you're God. just watching it and you know that if they were hanging on, you're like, it's just a matter, it was like a matter of time. Right. Um, but I mean, and on the other side of that it is how we were able to grow so quickly because we had this cash injection and we there's you know all of a sudden a lot of inventory on yeah, the market I and, that. and, um, and probably had pretty fair you know favorable you know yeah. rates just because they, they need to get someone to go ahead exactly so i mean um i give a ton of credit to andreas he mm-hmm. is like the master negotiator mm-hmm. and so uh we were able to get um we went to the new orleans market we um took three buildings there they're originally stay alfred um and it was actually funny i packed up my car as if i was moving there i had my cat my like let say dutch oven like the whole thing was coming with me and, <laughs> and just drove and i was like i don't know if i'm going to be here for like a month or a year uh ended up being six months or just under six months total okay. um and it was a real you know all of a sudden we had this whole inventory i was doing all of the back end onboarding and at the same time we also started onboarding two buildings in miami and they were huge a former stay alpha building in mm-hmm. brindle and a former sonder building in miami beach and so all of a sudden like legit we were just learning by force basically <laughs> and um but it was a great experience because it just like there was no other option but to figure it out right you, know? you, you had to there's no failing yeah um yeah know, it's just how are we going to make this happen? Yep, exactly. And so um, luckily Miami really carried us through COVID. Um, great market. People were coming down. People are still traveling. Well, I mean, yeah. there. Yeah. You, you only had that there were no there. rules. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, there, I, I think it was one month. And then, because I remember spring break and everyone's still going to Miami. They're basically like, fuck it. Yeah. We're going to go to, you know. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> and no, literally. literally yeah, and Atlanta and Miami were oh, wide open. Yeah. Yes. And well, also the thing is people, once people realized they could start working from home, that also changed a lot. Like we got a ton of people. This is where we realized that the midterm stays, that's mm-hmm. like a real sweet spot that people weren't catering to. And so. And we so, also so what, just just for our audience, sure. what do you go ahead and classify as a midterm stay? Sure, I would say anything over thirty days. So thirty days or more. Um, if you if someone was staying for a couple weeks, I would maybe say that as well. But I think a month or longer. Okay, so and, more of a like a corporate housing esque. Uh, yeah, kind of that style kind of thing. Stay, but, but what I realized is it's not. I think corporate housing. Uh, invokes the image of like your consultant that's you know coming right, down right, for no. three months yeah. and so we've realized it's like you know what people are getting divorced people are moving mm-hmm. people are renovating their homes there's all these reasons why people need to stay somewhere for just a little while yeah. and um in new orleans we also have a pretty substantial amount of that business mm-hmm. um and now that new orleans is fully open and the conventions are coming back one of our buildings is literally across from the convention center so nice. nice. Thank God, that's a great location. <laughs> um, and so there's all these kind of like, there's obviously your traditional travel, leisure sector, right. but there's a whole other host of reasons why people are traveling. And it's great to be able to cater to that. Right. So it's interesting, you your model, like we were talking about the arbitrage model, because there's two things that I've noticed, the two markets that you, in, you were in, and I'm speaking to Miami and New Orleans, are two markets that were really had issues with short-term rentals and regulations, yeah. right? And on top of that, just the whole arbitrage model. Yeah. It seems like those are two equations that you guys found great solutions for and were able to scale in other yeah. in, in ways that other businesses just were not. They just either didn't get out of the arbitrage in time or weren't able to negotiate. But how did you guys have the foresight to do that? And yeah, so I think that, that first it's the negotiating if you're going to do a master lease um option it's negotiating a reasonable rent like if you're if your rent if you cannot make enough money to cover your rent which is a that was the case in a lot of scenarios like you are just setting yourself up to fail so it's making sure getting andreas out there to negotiate uh favorable rents if that's the way we're going to do it and then also being creative Uh, you know all of our 
um, you know, agreements are kind of tailored to the building, tailored to the owner. Mm -hmm. And so we do have like a mix of, you know, um, like management agreements and master lease agreements. So it depends on, you know, each individual situation. And um, so there's some, like we have some buildings in Miami where the margins are fantastic. And so, but, you know, there would be other buildings where that would not be as great of an idea. So it really, it, you have to kind of like customize it to the situation that you're in. And then also, um, and I don't know if this will win me any friends or not, but we get hotel permits for our buildings. Yeah. And that just helps, um, you know, with everything. Well, and, you know, like in New Orleans, for example, they had this huge cyber attack on City Hall. So there's still a building that we're working, like trying to work through all the permits for. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's, it's just taking them a yeah. while. They were really right. set back. And then you have the hurricanes and um, I've learned that city government isn't always the most efficient. Yeah, so it's really trying to get hotel permits when we can because that just makes things easier. Um, and then if we have to get SDR permits, you know, I used to do all of our permitting, <laughs> which was a nightmare. <laughs> um, and now uh, we have, you know, a team dedicated to right. doing that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it's really, it's being like really analyzing the whole situation to see like, okay, what type of market are we in? What type of, you know, landlord, what, what's our partner like? So what does that whole agreement look like? And then, you know, what does the city look like in terms of taxes and regulations and, um, you know, nor these areas are really sensitive. I mean, New Orleans, you've just seen a lot of people go into neighborhoods like Treme. Yeah. And I mean, I've stayed at a, it was a you know short-term rental in Treme and yeah. it was beautiful, like absolutely stunningly redone. But there is active animosity in those neighborhoods against these short-term rentals. So, yeah. um, you know, I think, you know, the guys responsibly, they're doing a great job of trying to advocate, but they can't be everywhere at once. So, um, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're making it happen. although sometimes it seems like they're everywhere, yeah, at once. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but that's it. It's like, it's, you have to, I under, I definitely understand why these communities are upset in Miami. It's a lot more, there's just a massive hotel lobby. Um, yeah. you know, right. so, so, you, so you have, you don't have the deep as deep of pockets by any means to no. go ahead and fight against these hotels. Yeah. Right? And, you know, we've tried in my, in the Miami Dade County, there's all these tiny municipalities. Yeah. And so they all have their own, like their own code, their own permitting pr procedures or lack thereof. And so we went by the rules and, um, one neighbor in Miami shores mm -hmm. and they were just absolutely not about it. And basically forced us to make a decision there. It was like, it was, that wasn't worth the fight to keep right. the property. So that's why, you know, our model of full building residences is really the way we're going to continue forward, unless we find a shiny penthouse, which we love. So, right. Well, you know, nothing wrong with the shiny yeah. penthouse, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, the, the midterm states help with that too, right? Because mm -hmm. it just, it, it takes you out of that conversation, right? For most regulatory issues. Yeah. But I think that's. And uh, that's why I think we're having a blend. It's trying to make sure that, um, you know, if for whatever reason there is a steep drop off in travel, which I hope there isn't, that we have something that can sustain right. the business, you know? Yeah. So with the attitudes of the owners that you guys were dealing with, you know, you say Andreas is awesome at what he does. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to simplify that. Like, I'm sure he is. Yeah. That is a hell of a challenge to change their attitudes. Yeah. Especially if we're talking about red sharing buildings, right? And getting them to, yeah. to actually, you know, get away from what they're traditionally used to. Yeah. I see. I know I, we work with, I work with a couple of companies that, with that ease that, that kind of do this space, but, you know, friends in the industry mm -hmm. and talking through what they're going through mm -hmm. and getting them to conceptually understand what we do yeah. in the space and how it can benefit them. That is no easy task. It's no easy task. And then I think it changes when they start to see the numbers come in. Right. And then we're like, should this be a master lease? Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, Absolutely. The, I, we're fortunate. Um, a lot of our landlord partners have worked with previous operators. So that was a, you know, that was the initial hurdle being like, look, I know that this just happened to you. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> we're not them. We're, yeah, not, we're, them. Not, yeah. we're not them. We're not them. We're doing this a little bit differently. You know, we, yeah. we, this isn't our first rodeo. We've been down the, you know, this, this is yeah. our proven model. Absolutely. Uh, here's some, here's some testimonials from, yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, now we can say like we you know obviously they see all of our financials we're like this right. is like here you can look under the hood this is what's going on um and you know and then they see what's been happening afterwards and i think i'd say they're pretty happy about it and we also we take really good care of the buildings too that i think has become 
a really interesting part of our business. Like years ago when I would be at these conferences and there's like entire sections dedicated to like how to negotiate with your owner or dealing with your yeah. owners. And I'm like, oh, thank God I don't have to deal with that. And now I'm like, oh, now I have to deal with that. Except it's an owner of a huge building, which right. is a little, right. bit, a little different. bit different. Yeah. And, but you say like, look, like we go through all of our, any review that is less than five stars and we dissect it and pull out all the information that we need to like address, right? And so we can go to an owner and be like, look, people are complaining about the floors. Like they are really old. They look dirty, even though they're clean. We have to replace them. Here's what it's going to cost. We'll do it. You can reimburse us over, you know, a year, whatever yeah. it is. We'll break and it down. we'll break it down. And when we show like, it's these, a lot of these landlords really care about their property. Right. So we say like, look, like you want this to be going well, you want this property to be its best. We want it to be its best. Like, let's make it happen. Right. And, and ultimately the ROI coming mm -hmm. out of that is, is going to behoove them to go ahead and make those changes soon. Because if, yeah. you know, if, if you are at a, at a four star mm -hmm. and you bring that up to that five star, you can demand more for that room. Absolutely. I mean, so it, it comes, comes back. It around. does. And so, you know, I also understand from their perspective, like going through COVID, like nothing is certain. And I understand that fear that all like, you know, the cash machine might get turned off at any right. point. So it is about making sure like, let's not do this during March when we're just printing money, right. we can do it during the summer and we can do it strategically. So you, you print money in March. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, March is not in Miami. In the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, like Q1 for us is delicious. Right. It's great. Um, both markets, we just had our first like real Mardi Gras in new Orleans. Wow incredible i mean right. and it's um so it's great i mean i always joke that we need to diversify our natural disasters because mm -hmm. we're in hurricane markets only i'm like let's throw in some wildfires or something get some earthquakes in your yeah, life exactly. yeah, it's, 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 actually, actually getting ahead we talked about mm -hmm. uh we're talking about pigeon forge earlier yeah. you know you can go right into severe county there Four yeah, yeah. So got you. there was one point so we have um a huge we have 90 employees in the philippines mm -hmm. and there was one point where there's like a typhoon hitting the philippines and a hurricane hitting new orleans and miami and i was like oh my gosh oh, was, and uh yeah so those i mean obviously i'm joking about it but there's very real problems that come with that right. um and but also that means like our summer months are usually slower like mm -hmm. august is tough um which is traditionally right. when everyone is making their money you know in other parts of the country yeah for sure yeah, but it's it's a slower month for for the the vendor side and for sure yeah because you know, most are making and we can't go ahead and, and dive in there i have a question yeah. for you sure you went from 50 or 60 to 500 in a very short period of time yes <laughs> um obviously you're you know you're talking about scaling responsibly i use the word always use the word scaling appropriately mm -hmm. um same thing you are you know where are you going next like, yeah. So great question. Um, I obviously, you know, growing 800% in the next year, probably not going to happen, which I, you know, I don't hate. Um, but uh, yes, definitely expanding to other markets. Uh, we're probably going to double in size within mm -hmm. the next couple of months. Um, so that feels a bit better. You know, our no, no, he heard it here first. Yeah, you know, I, <laughs> no, I would say, we were going. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, so I would say all the usual suspects, leisure mm -hmm. markets with high ABR. So mm -hmm. Nashville, Austin, Savannah, Charleston, you know, yeah. the woo markets. <laughs> I did not hear Atlanta. I did not hear Atlanta. No, Atlanta's not a woo, woo market. Yeah, like how many bachelorette parties do you see in Atlanta? Right. You, you, Actually, you know what? I'll take that back. It. I've never been to Atlanta. I'm sorry. <laughs> Within PSA for Atlanta, really quick mm -hmm. 20 colleges and universities. Wow. Every major sporting event outside of hockey, mm -hmm. including college football, basketball, and their national regional events, largest passenger airport in the world, and yeah. Okay. So yeah. Well, anyways, well, well, no, I'm pass, not getting paid. I'll to pass, talk about I'll pass that tidbit so. on to our head of no. real estate partnerships. Yeah. No, no, anyway, so, <laughs> so that's well, amazing. I just want you guys in there. <laughs> the uh, so you, you're obviously doing like these amazing things, and you're scaling. Mm -hmm. My question for you, and I, I I like asking this question, but my what what have you sucked at oh like, oh okay yeah like absolutely. Where, where are your failures and, and how and what did you learn from for them? sure okay so i i love that question because it's it's very easy to gloat about the good things but so we have um our like tech team i hello hi that's me yeah. um, <laughs> and, um there's other we have i have other uh team members that help obviously and you know do different things like the physical technology but we we didn't spend money on hiring that talent for a while um and uh that's definitely a deficiency for sure and we've definitely we've are remedying that we have remedied that but when we did this huge like this massive growth 
part of that is now that we've slowed down a little bit, it's going back and being like, okay, are all of our processes in place? Like, do right. we have, are we, do we have a sustainable and stable foundation so that we can do this again? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, absolutely. There's things that like our tech team needs help. If anyone's listening to this and you need a job, <laughs> please send me a message on LinkedIn. Um, but that's, you know, very real because it was easy to kind of, to get where we are with just the knowledge that we had before. But if we're going to take the next leap, we really have to make sure that our internal systems are yeah. running smoothly. You got to build that foundation mm -hmm. now. I mean, yeah. you, you need to build it two years ago. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but also that's part of the thing that I have loved about you know, the journey that our company has been on is there are very few parts of this business that I haven't been in. And so because I was forced to learn how to do things, like I know all about distribution. Right. And um, it was so funny. I would give Andreas a hard time because when he had to like let go of certain departments that he was like, you know, liked to run. And I was like, yeah, you yeah. just have to not do like, let somebody else do the job. It's hard. And then I had to give up distribution. And I was like, oh no, I was like, it's my baby. <laughs> That's hard. It's hard. It's, it it's a really hard thing, yeah. but it's, it's a sign of, of good leadership uh, when you're scaling and you can actually, you know, I mean, the whole point, every time we do a hire, every time anyone does hire, you want to hire someone that's smarter. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and which is even hard to do. Like, it's hard yeah. to go ahead and be like, hey, I know this cat's sharper than me, mm -hmm. but, but we need them on our team. Yeah. And, um, but that's, that's how, that's how good companies grow. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, that's also the, the uh, flip side of that, which has been one of the harder things is realizing that not everybody grows with you. Mm -hmm. And there have been some, you know, when we started out, like it makes me like very sad that those people, some of those people can't make the whole journey with you, you know, right. but that's a, re that's reality. There's some, that sometimes it yeah. doesn't happen. Right. And so that's also been uh, a lesson in leadership, I think, and running a company is like the, that there's some realities that come along with the growth. Let's talk about your philanthropy as a company mm. and, and some of the things that, that you and as a company, you and Andreas have, have, have really stepped up um, during some of these, you know, next, not, you know, these, these issues that have happened. And yeah. It's like absolutely amazing. Like how did that, how did this stuff that you're doing in providing housing and I think it was two separate times. Correct? Yes. Like if I'm correct, remember. No, correctly. that's correct. Yeah. So the Surfside collapse happened yeah. and we were um, about to onboard. So Sunny Isles is a neighborhood that's like just north of there. And this is Miami. For this is in Miami, Miami. Yes. Yeah. And so um, we hadn't moved in yet, um, but that happened. And in 48 hours, our team onboarded the entire building and uh we're able amazing. it was it was our i i'm just so proud of our team like when we asked them to like step up and you know work their ass off yeah. they really come through in a big way um and the you know there's absolutely like that tragedy is so unimaginable mm -hmm. that if we could provide like it was also an agreement with our landlord like we're doing this all for free yeah. like we had to swap out like some refrigerators. We had to, we stocked it full of food. So I didn't have to think about anything. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it might like, it, it's nothing compared to what those people were going right, through. Right, so, sure. um, and, you know, and then from that, we, you know, there's certain people that we met in Miami. I mean, it had, it was great for us to get involved in the community in that way, because sometimes it is difficult when you are just grinding to do some of that extra stuff, you know, right. the, the philanthropy side. And so, um, and that was Andreas's idea mm -hmm. and the team totally stepped up and for that. And the other side was, um, the other, um, housing was hurricane Ida. So, oh, right. um, that was, that was, I think more like nerve wracking for me because our team was there yeah. and, um, you know, directly impacted by that. And so, um, after the storm passed the next day um our head of operations tiffany and i um we packed up my car and a van full of supplies and just drove straight to new orleans i've now done that drive six times i never want to do it again <laughs> like i'm over it florida's a big state um, <laughs> yeah, it just keeps going and it just keeps going it is so boring like that i-10 oh my god I'm like it will literally never end um yeah. so that for me like we we got there and um our team was we were turning all of the units for for us and then one of our landlords has another couple buildings that he manages on his own so we turned 
almost 500 units, I think it was, in wow. the span of a week and a half without electricity. Um, and our team there also just stepped it up. It was incredible. Yeah. And luckily in the city center, we just didn't have power. Like there wasn't a lot of damage in like right. the central business district. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge blessing. And, um, you know, we, we had at the time we had um, a single family home in the city. It was like a whole town home. Mm -hmm. So that was like our base camp. I cooked dinner for everyone mm -hmm. every night. Like we had everyone's families. Like we just tried to make sure that everybody was taken care of. And so the first group we had in was Salvation Army and then Cox Communications and Amazon. So they took everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it ended up, I mean, that was, yeah, it saved, yeah. It saved September for us, right. really. <laughs> um, but it just showed, you know, we wanted to make sure our employees knew that we weren't just going to like, leave yeah. them hanging we anyone that stayed and worked we paid them i think double their mm -hmm. hourly rate and then gave everyone a huge bonus based on the number of hours that they worked because i mean it was hot it was yeah. it was new orleans in the end of august yeah. no electricity Just you had sweltering humidity. sweltering it's like had, living in a sauna like it, for people for, that have it's, been yeah it is i mean it's literally a swamp it's, it's, and it's, so and they had to carry we had to carry everything upstairs and really like the team really came together and that's another you know uh, i think i mean we saw other hotels in the city like everyone leaves which right. i totally understand but the fact that our team were like look well you can stay we'll all stay on property we'll have, we'll have people in different groups in the building so no one was alone and we'll make sure that you're fed we'll make sure you you know taken care of and so i think that that shows that shows our team that we're you know serious about taking care of them too. i think yeah. yeah, it's amazing. I, I think that the interesting thing with all these things, when when these things are done genuinely, mm -hmm. like you know, and you know, there there there's philanthropy that is yeah. is 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 curated. For sure, it's it's, it's a PR fun. machine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and and you see it all the time. And whatever it it is, what it is, it's still some good things are being done. But that's sure. that's not the intention. Yeah. Um. And, and you know some whatever good things are done but when when you're going at it from a a real place you know with with heart mm -hmm. and you know that's your mission it comes back like tenfold absolutely and i mean and we, we see it all the time and and kudos to to you and andres and the, the whole team like thank you it was freaking awesome yeah. like it would like from afar seeing seeing those two times you know even just like you know, I knew these stories, but then talking about it now, it's awesome. Yeah, it makes me feel really proud. I mean, there's so many things that have happened in our company history that make me proud to be a part of this team. But it's moments like that where I'm like, wow, we're really like we're putting our money where our mouth like we're really right. following through on what we're saying, you know, and um, yeah, it's been it's been great. And, you know, hopefully we just don't have any hurricanes this yeah. year. <laughs> That'd be ideal. Well, you knew we were leading up to this. Let's talk about this 30 under 30. <laughs> I was, I was waiting. You know, you're, 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 you know, we were going to embarrass you. Yeah. So, well, at least try to. Yeah. 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 In a good way. Yeah. But. So, yeah, um, we made um, Iskander, our head of finance, and one of the co founders. We made uh, 30 under 30 this year. And <laughs> I got to give you your flowers. Right here. Yeah. That's Thank awesome. you. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, it's it's a huge honor. And I just did. I was like, yeah, we'll submit it. And like, you know, yeah. whatever. And then we got it. And I, we, I was at the Women's Summit and I was literally like half dressed and I just opened my email and it just derailed my entire morning. And I realized like two hours later, I'm like, I'm still not dressed. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I've not finished this process. Yeah. Um, and it's great because it also has given me an opportunity to shed light on our industry mm -hmm. because it's right. like you know it brings attention to what we're doing and so i think that's it's been great for that um you know and it also when i you know when i started at this company i got a lot of flack um whether it was said to my face or indirectly mm -hmm. uh for you know essentially getting three degrees and then working out of someone's kitchen table for a company that didn't exist mm -hmm. and so <laughs> <laughs> um, and so in a way like i have to say it was some validation yeah. that i made the right yeah. choices along the way um yeah so you know it felt good i'll be honest <laughs> well, i mean yeah. Your, your leadership should be acknowledged, right? Like mm -hmm. in this space, one of the things, you know, John and I are, are fierce advocates for DEI. Mm -hmm. And as someone who's newer to this industry, mm -hmm. one of the things that I noticed immediately within this space was the amount of women leaders, mm -hmm. owners, 
yeah you know in, in prominent positions that you just don't see in other industries yeah like that make impact that drive decisions that aren't just you know not just mm -hmm. in management but are really building cultures and driving organizations yeah. and you look at what a difference that makes i i remember you know i was in your your session at brma in san antonio and just completely blown away just by how you were talking about the things that you did and there was such a level of i don't I, maturity is probably the not not the right word but it it was i when you identify because to me leadership verb right yeah it's not what you say it's what you do yeah absolutely. and knowing your company and, like, yeah. and, and being in this space like i knew it was authentic mm -hmm. and so i just love that we need and know that we need so much more of that within our industry yeah how do you define kind of your leadership style and what what drove you to kind of operate the way that you do because when you talk it sounds so natural yeah but i don't want people to think that it you know people always see the mountaintop they never see the journey on the way up yeah and you know that's where you oftentimes your your styles get defined right like yeah. that's where you get to absolutely you are. and you know i i mean i'm still on that journey you yeah. know i'm still learning every day i mean there's a reality i am younger like the, you yeah, are. I am I, under yes, 30. you are yeah. <laughs> one a couple more months under 30. um so. you gave that we weren't putting that out there. <laughs> I, I, just, I, I thought it was your birthday yesterday yeah, yeah, like, yeah exactly uh so um but that's you know it's i i think that my you know, from when I was younger, um, I was a leader. I was like the captain of my field hockey team in high school. There's some natural like leadership roles that I've taken. Um, I always joked I'm office mom. I'm like the mom of the friend group. Um, and so like that, that kind of comes naturally. And I think I couldn't, I, I haven't had to put a label on my leadership style, mm -hmm. but it's definitely leading by example. Yeah. And yeah. You know, um, one thing that I'm honestly trying to work on is getting commitment versus compliance. That's something mm -hmm. I'll be honest that I struggle with sometimes. It's like, I'm like, this is just what you have. Like, we're doing this, you have to do it. Um, but I really see the value in getting like legitimate buy in yeah, for the decisions no, that we're making. Sense. So that's, I, you know, something that I'm actively trying to be better at. Um, and yeah, just really leading by example. And there's, you know, no rules that apply to someone at a specialist level that don't apply to me. Right. And so that's definitely, and, um, you know, also refining that leadership style. Uh, we're, you know, reading all the books, you know, doing all the things, yeah. um, but also identifying where my strengths are and learning how to play on those. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's why I'm here solo at the conference. Like I'm, I'm the, mm -hmm. I'm the social butterfly of the group. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I think just learning how to capitalize on your strengths and then learning to build out a team around you that compensates for the things that I might not be so great at. That's good. That's a great, great answer. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> hey, I, I we want we don't want to have this go so long. Yeah. Uh, we know we got a conference. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh like, my this god, has been of course. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's not our normal setup, but this yeah. is really it's nice to see people in, in, in I person. Love it. Yeah. yeah. It's so much nicer. Absolutely. Um, we're probably gonna have to go ahead and up our our our, our I mean, Google stuff. I now. love I love the setup. Yeah. Um, well, well it you is. could see where we are. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. we'll, we'll you know as we scale. Mm -hmm. Also, we'll scale with some better equipment. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, you guys yeah. have microphones. I think yeah. we need to do a redo in Miami. We can definitely oh, we would yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. love to host you. I like. I, uh, first of all, Miami is a great destination yeah. or New Orleans, either yeah, one. I yeah. love New Orleans. The food yeah. is yeah. absolutely incredible. Um, but yes, you are, we will hook it up anytime you come. Um, and you know, I, I love doing these kinds of things. It's so fun to do it in person. Yeah. And I mean, that's what I've, I mean, obviously all the sessions at Burma are great, but I think what I get out of it are yeah. things like this, like actually getting to have these conversations. And I've learned a lot in the last couple of days, just from talking to people at the bar, you yeah. know? That, well, that's the, <laughs> that's the, the bar is the new golf course. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Honestly, and I prefer that if I had to learn how to golf, oh my God. Oh, I got to start. I almost yeah. killed somebody on the golf course one time. Really? Um, I would love, I will drive the golf cart. I'm really great at the cocktails portion, but I do not have yeah. that like swinging hand eye coordination. Well, thing. Well, yeah, I, I, I <laughs> can't excel at everything. I get, yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you I do have, have to... some faults. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>